trying to smash its way in. Keep back! <laughs> what the hell is that? It's a red sob, Hecklian. Don't make any more of your irritating noises. Charlican! You know it. I extracted a filling from it earlier today. I said no more noise, you hairless apes. Oh, Sally Wally, please don't abuse me. Quiet. You spineless moron. You got one thing right. Hero, where are you going? Out of here. I did not give you permission. Permission? Permission? Who the bleeding hell do you think you are, head teacher? Maureen, submit! Oh, submit to its will! Oh, shut your face, I've had just about enough! Maureen! You don't want to pick a fight with an eight-foot frog! Size isn't important! Oh, that's lucky for when we wed! Are you going to get out of my way? I admire your courage! You can admire my collection of dungarees for all I care! Just move, Toad! I'm getting off this shuttle! Ah! Maureen! <laughs> Pierced her with its tongue! But look where it pierced her! How disgusting! That really was toad in the hole! If any of you annoy me, you will feel much pain. <laughs> Let me go! You bastard, Aaron! I said let me go! Well, I should kill you for what you did to me! And how would you explain a stiff in the toilet? Unfortunately, I'm not a celebrity, so I couldn't! Then let me go! I want some answers first! To what? If it's questions on geography, I'm no good with the Balkans! Why did you leave me to take the blame? Do you really need an answer to that? Well... Yes, I'm fine, thanks! Tell me! Are you really that stupid? Every time you evade an answer, I'll stick your head down this toilet! It'll ruin my plan! <laughs> <laughs> Still afraid of water, I see, Aaron. No, it's just whoever used this last forgot to flush. Oh. Oh. Look at that. A huge bed covered in black fur. Oh, how sumptuous. What a peculiar shape and filling virtually the whole room. Looks very comfortable. Surely this couldn't belong to that editor chap. I would say this is more Scylla style. I'm going to have a bounce around on it. How will you get up onto it? It's about three meters high. Look, there's a long furry rope here beside. I'll climb up that. Oh. Be careful, Turnidus. We can't risk any more of us being incapacitated. I say, what a wonderful sleeping implement. Wee! Oh, how bouncy! Wee! All very strange to me. Look at the state of me. Shut it. Let me go. There's nothing you can do now. I should turn you in. Really? Yes, and I suppose as part of my statement, I could explain exactly why you were involved. How is your mother, Gamak? You git. You've knocked my wig down the pan. Still into dressing up? How dare you? You're a family of sick morons. Oh, that's rich, coming from a man whose mother was a... Don't you dare say her name, Polly, 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 Polly. Oh, for the last time, Gamak, you say a word to anyone about who I am or my involvement with the Fandilox affair, and I will reveal everything about your mother. I still have those pictures and the taped conversation we had when you were begging me to let you in on the deal. You won't get away with this, Aaron. I will get you back for my 20 years stuck in that institute. Betrayal costs, and right here's where you start paying. Enough! I'm walking out of here now, and there is nothing you can do to stop me. True. Farewell, loser. Oh, look at my wig. But just remember this. A kiss is just a kiss. What? I'm sorry, I thought you were singing the... Look, we may have done some blinding duets together on karaoke night down at the cock -in, but that doesn't alter anything now. Now I've found you again, I will follow you in the shadow of the Space Patrol and eventually take my revenge. I don't think so. Excuse me, I have some top brass to polish. He can't be allowed to roam free. And what's he doing here, of all places? I've got to find a way to stop him. Oh, blind.
blimey, I better get back to reception of Madame Deephole. Oh, God, look at the state of me. Right, calm down, calm down. Let's get washed and brushed up. Otherwise, questions may be asked. <laughs> Turnidus, have you finished yet? Oh, it's so much fun, Mr. Bub. If only you weren't stuck as a drinks machine. Yes. Well, thank you for reminding me. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, it's so lovely to roll around on. I think it's time we return to see the diagnosis on Cindy and Midas. Yes, of course. Oh, wait a minute. What is it? There's a huge pocket thing over the back here. Pocket? What's in it? Some strange gooey stuff. Looks like earth honey. Is it? <laughs> yeah, the horrible sour taste. Why would anyone put sour honey in a large bed pocket? And there's some huge thin wires sticking out. Oh, I wish I could join you up there. This back part is quite hard. Very odd. Hang on. There's a smaller closed pocket at the side here. Uh, be careful, Turnidus. It all seems very odd. I'll try and open it. Oh, it's a bit stiff. Um, there. Oh! <laughs> uh, Turnidus, are you all right? By the light of Galgadin's glassware. It's a huge eye. A what? A huge eye lodged into the pocket. What a horrendous thought. Are you all right? Oh, I've come over all faint. Oh, there's a similar pocket over this side here, too. Uh, don't open it. Oh, I have to. Uh, oh. uh, another eye. <gasps> oh, my lord. This is astounding. Oh, my lord. Two eyes stuck in the pockets of a huge bed covered in black fur. Oh, my lord. Well, what is it, Istibab? That isn't a bed, Turnidus. Isn't a bed? But what is it? You've been cavorting all over the back of a very large dead black cat. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want from us? Nothing from you, you are dry, sterile. Charming. You are a feat, therefore useless. Oh, thank you. And you are too stupid. <laughs> I've got an MVQ in, in brick lane. Silence! This is the day of reckoning for the Red Sard Heclion. For a hundred years at the mercy of the Space Patrol. What do you mean? They've entrapped us on our home world for a century. Oh. By invasion, intrusion, they curtailed our expansion and development program. Were you planning to build houses on the Green Belt? Your dentistry skills do not match your level of stupidity. Oh, don't sound or I'll wet my nappy. The Red Sarb Heclian have been dormant for too long. But all that suppression, all that unused. The energy has only made us stronger and more determined. But how did the Space Patrol stop you? They confiscated our deep space travel devices and put an exclusion zone around our world. Any craft that ventured too far was obliterated. Their actions will not go unpunished. But, 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 but hang on. We have never heard of this. And I thought the Space Patrol were there for good relations and cargo handling. Your propaganda machines are well-oiled and worked to precision. The details they give are carefully manufactured. And now you're on the warpath. A strange phrase, but true, very, very true. Remain here and tend to the woman. If she dies, so do you. I must repair the engines. What have you done to her? She is mine. She plays hard to get. I should know, but I've almost won her over. She is mine. I can't see you two stepping out arm in arm around Hyde Park. A force shield will cover this doorway. If you approach it, you will be hurt. Remember that. I shall return. Now what? Oh, Mr. Pubert's could have saved us. Oh, oh shut up. up. Ah, oh, there you are at last, sir. 
You're covered in things. Enough of your insolence. What happened? I slipped. Not half you did. Listen to me, microbe. I have important information for Colonel Franklin. I want to see her now. I'm afraid I've been requested to escort you out, sir. I will see her now. I'm afraid I'm not allowed to... If you want to remain having two of those dangling, call her now. Quickly, come out of the room. Calm down. Oh, but you know what the worst thing is? What? It's not that I've romped about on the back of a very large dead animal. It's not that I prized open its eyelids. What is the matter? I actually ain't dead cat earwax. Oh, oh. Foul times, dear king. But this does leave one burning question. Can I ever show my face on Volterabia again? Apart from that... Uh, what question? How did it get to that size? I have had just about enough of you. You're not the first woman to say that. <clears throat> not only did you interfere during delicate negotiations with Gulgalin on Volterabia, then jump Transmat back here to Earth, but you have been persistently evading your extradition from this building. Apart from that, I've been relatively good. You are sailing very close to the wind. No, it's where I fell into something unpleasant in the bathroom. I meant leave now or I will have you arrested without question. And no threats about your journalist pals. You're as much a journalist as I'd wear an A-line skirt on a tram. Would you? No. Now get out, you filthy little man. Mm, I've still got a temperament that turns milk sour, I see. Out! You haven't changed, Cymbeline. How did you know my name? How's that birthmark on your left buttock that looks like a silhouette of Haile Selassie? <gasps> I can't have slept with you. I don't like men with handlebar moustaches. No, but I know a man who did. Anyway, as requested, I'll go. Toodle pip! Oh, uh, one more thing, Fandilox. Goodbye. Wait, what did you say? Fandilox. Ring a bell, does it? Fandilox. Close the door, whoever you are. <laughs> What shall we do? Our first concern is Cindy and Midas and getting them medical attention. Let's hope the medic bay has the equipment to deal with it. Indeed. Uh, secondly, we need to inform the Space Patrol of what the editor and Scylla have done. And lastly, we need to return to our respective homes. What was that? Sounded like an explosion. Maybe it's the editor back aboard. It came from down here, near the engine rooms. Quickly! Poor, lovely, ill Maureen. I'll kiss her brow every minute until she awakes. How is she? Her temperature seems to be rising, but I can't see any other problems. But what about where that thing stung her? I'll check her. Leave that clunky alone, you filthy sod. Hold on, Faye. Look at her stomach. It looks swollen. <gasps> I never noticed that before. She must be pregnant. It's our child. A virgin birth. Shut up. The lights have come back on. Oh, 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 I've forgotten that there was a dead body in here with us. The engines are repaired. How is the woman? I think you're disgusting, injuring a pregnant woman. Your thoughts of me are of no consequence. Hang on. If the Space Patrol have an exclusion zone, how have you managed to journey out here and get on board? This ship is still in the exclusion zone. So it was you who blew up the engines? Of course. But uh, how? I mean, all ships leaving Red Saab Heklian are thoroughly checked by the Space Patrol for anything untoward. Despite their oppressive presence on our world, my cunning has defeated them. You managed to get an explosive on board. How? The one place they didn't check was inside the bucket that collects the spit and muck when you work on teeth. But we had a space patrol guard with us at all times. She'd have seen you plodding above, surely. You think I'm so unsubtle? Yes. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 no. <laughs> the filling you remove from my mouth 
which was sucked down into your spittle bucket, was a highly charged, compact remote explosive. That's incredible. Charlican, you saucy minx! Once the shuttle was safely away from the planet, yet still within the exclusion zone... You detonated and boarded our stranded ship! And your space patrol can do nothing. Blinded by its own unsubtle bureaucracy, it assumed this ship was okay and has not questioned my journey within the exclusion zone. She wakes. All is prepared. Now to fetch my supplies, dump my ship, and we can leave. What's going on? I feel odd. I'm not surprised where that thing stung you. I think we'd better explain. <gasps> oh! Fire! The engines are on fire! What shall we do? My emergency training hasn't dealt with this problem. Quickly, before more damage is done, spray that extinguisher. Right. Oh! You have to aim the nozzle at the fire. Well, I wish you'd told me. Now my ginger robes are damp as well as singed. I shall have to supply you with cups of water from this drinks machine. But I'm not thirsty. For you to throw over the flames. Quickly. How do you know those things about me? From a secret source. And how could you, someone with a perm, know about Fandilocks? Information was leaked to me. From who? That is not important. Of course it's important. Let me just say that I know where Frindle's relic is. What? How do you know about the ring? As I said, Colonel, information was leaked to me by the person who stole it from Fandilox. And now only I know where it is. Where is this scum? Dead. Greed is very destructive, Colonel, don't you agree? He tried to hold on to the relic, but both you and I know of its destructive influence. Why would anyone tell you? He owed me his life, which was worthless as the relic had taken that, so he told me of its location as payment. I will only tell you where it is if you agree to my terms. You really are the epitome of blackmail. I also used to be a part-time lifeguard in Frank Arola, but that's not important either. That relic belongs to the Fandilocks people and must be returned to them. Of course, but only I know where it is. So I'm afraid it's my terms or I'm off for a cappuccino. What terms? That only you accompany me to recover it. <laughs> Do you think I was born yesterday? No, I'd estimate the year 2088. Why? I meant don't treat me like a fool. This is a trick. How? The information about the relic can only have come from the person who stole it. It was never in the news and was only ever privy to the eyes of a few space patrol high-ups. I will have to inform the board. No. Goodbye. Wait! No deal, Colonel. I followed you back here from our amazing chance encounter on Volterabia because I believed you had intelligence. I am sorry I was mistaken. Stop right there. Please come back in. If I get this relic back, the Space Patrol will be forever in my debt. Forever. How very true, Colonel. <laughs> Your standing raised even higher! <laughs> It's done. The flames are out. Good thinking, Mr. Bob. I feel quite worn out. What started the fire? Let me look closer. What a mess. The fires caused a lot of damage? Some, but nothing that isn't repairable. It's the actual state of the engines. This damage wasn't caused by the fire. Oh, I see. Yes, they do look a bit... Uh... I believe the word you use is knackered. It's as if some huge hammer has been used to smash them up. But they'll get us about. With a bit of repair. I suspect we'll get to Fenkelburn. Mr. Bob, what is it? Oh, no! What? Look, the reactor core. It's open at the top corner. What does that mean? It means we've all been exposed to a massive dose of radiation. So, do you agree? The two of us, plus one security guard, use long-range transmat to get to the planet where the relic is. 
Once there, you will guide me to it and allow me to return it to Fandilox. Indeed. Only one security guard. The people of the planet are highly suspicious of strangers. What are you getting out of all this? Money? The glory? All I want is that relic out of my possession. It has... tendencies. <laughs> Myths. Legends. Truths, which I have seen. Only by me returning it to its rightful homeworld can I be freed of that ring's evil curse. You believe all that? That's why you want me to take it? I can trust you to return it to Fandilox. Once you leave, I want no more to do with you or the whole relic situation. Fandilox will be forever in my... The Space Patrol's debt. Okay, the deal is on. Security guard Cranid. Report to me at once and get a replacement in immediately. At once, sir. So, on what planet is the relic located? I think for safety I should type in the coordinates with an override so that once we've transmitted there, the computer wipes all record of the destination. Why? Now who's treating who like a fool? Hurry, Colonel, I grow impatient. Will we need oxygenators? No. Then all that we need is to wait for security guard Cranid. Poor Cindy and Midas. They're getting worse by the minute. Is that you, nurse? Try to stay calm, Midas. Please get me off this big dipper. I feel sick. Mr. Bob, I've had a terrible fault. What? Maybe that radiation explains why Cindy and Midas are so ill. Of course. They travel to your planet on this ship. And that journey takes three weeks. Help! I'm stuck inside Jimmy Carter's sinus. Uh, let me check what the diagnosis machine says. Oh, no. You're right. They've been exposed to three weeks radiation. Do you reckon that is what made the cat creature so big? It must be. But I didn't think radiation mutated that quickly. It depends what other chemicals have been used to form the reactor core. Cindy, Scylla, Maureen, Jake, Kine, Hull. What shall we do? What damage could it have done to these two? I don't want to be in the cult anymore. Please, avaunt thee. He's becoming delirious. We need to get them detoxed at once. Are there the facilities in this medic bay? No, I've got Merle Streep in my baguette. Covered in ape saliva. Why don't we all transmat back down to Volterabia? I'm sure Galgaling could help. Uh, because both the oxygenators have run out, they couldn't survive in your planet's atmosphere. Uh, let's get back up to the flight deck, uh, see if we can find a nearby ship with a detoxifying unit. Please help me, please! They're getting worse. I suggest we put them into cryosleep to halt the process of decay. How do we do that? It's all quite simple. Just follow my instructions. I found the cryo chambers earlier. Let's wheel them down there on these trolleys. I could be a fish finger if you cover me in breadcrumbs. Oh. oh, this is terrible. Yes, but never mind. Oh, they're getting worse all the time. We'll manage. This is security guard Cranid at reception, calling duty office again. I urgently need a replacement as I have to go and assist Colonel Franklin. So please get an off-duty receptionist over here at Space Patrol HQ now. And I don't care who it is. Oh, it's like trying to get blood out of a stone. Are you okay over there, madam? Good. Nice shawl. You can always put the telly on if you're bored. All right, mate. Crispin Kalis, what do you want? Well, that's not very nice. I'm your replacement. You're a pilot? Yeah, but I'm pretty nifty at answering the phones. I'll give you a demo. Hello? Good afternoon. How are ya? How can I help ya? Good and I. But you're hardly portraying the uh, corporate image with your massive quiff, tight t-shirt and tattoo saying kiss me quick and suck me slow. Well, hey, get the girls going, don't it? I haven't time to argue with you. Who have you got time to argue with, then? Uh, you take over until the next shift. I have to go to the Colonel. Oh, see you later, mate. <laughs> right, let's take a seat behind this ornate reception desk. I'm starving. Oh, yes. I think it's time to have a packet of my all-time favourite hot dog and mustard flavour crisps. You're right over there, love. Blimey, she's a bit of all right for an older woman. If I lounge seductively in this receptionist's chair and sit back casually, she can see my well-toned six-pack. 
You're right over there. Lovely day for a bit of loafing, ain't it? <laughs> oh, broke the bleeding chair. Don't make these things like they used to, love. Oh, I think I've damaged my lower back. I know, I'll put the reception TV on. That'll distract her from me rubbing my swollen coccyx. Where's the remote? Ah, here goes. And now on Galactivision, here is the 20 hundred hours news with Jake Avara. Our top stories tonight. I'm to star in my very own science fiction fantasy series playing an even more heroic version of myself in even tighter lycra. Galactovision announced a free-for-all entry system into the Galactovision Song Contest. News just in, competition winners killed in horrific space accident. Good evening. Tonight, my pants are sponsored by Big Boys Boxers. First, our story about the famous Galactovision Song Contest this year, coming from Medic World, the home of last year's winners, Swing Time Larry and his nurse of pop, with that ever so famous one hit wonder, Shake It Till You're Loose or the Knob Falls Off. And as the host planet make up the rules of entry, the Chief Surgeon of Medic World has decided for a change. We have the Chief Surgeon on a live satellite link now. Chief Surgeon, what will the new rules be? Anyone can enter. The contest will be broadcast live over three days with a continuous barrage of entrants. Sounds like a girl I once knew. And how will the winner be decided? A telephone vote will determine the winner. So, why this sudden change of procedure? We want to encourage people to visit Medic World, a sterile and boring place at the best of times. Unlike my pants. But, Chief Surgeon, and this is where I probe deep, so look out. Why do you want more people to visit? Well, Jake, I may call you Jake. Well, it's better than Samantha. We're hoping to entice more people to become organ donors. You mean they give up their instruments after completing their song? No, you fool. I mean we're desperately short of human body parts. An exclusive on my new slot. So, what are you offering? Any major organ that you have two of and don't really need one in exchange for a washing machine tumble dryer. You can't be serious. Twin speed drums. But, Chief Surgeon, this is deplorable. Asking people to give up bits of their bodies for electrical goods? Well, we do have a catalogue upon request, and there's a very good exchange rate. I believe at close of business it was two for micro-effect jacuzzis to every one gallbladder. This is outrageous! It's not compulsory, and organ removal won't occur until after the contest winner has been announced. Well, that's all we have time for on that story. And now on to our next big story, fresh off the press. A ship taking the two winners of a stellar radio network competition has been obliterated by meteorites! just outside the orbit of Voltarabia, the competition destination. The crew and the winners were killed immediately. Uh, hang on. Oh, we have some news just in. News just in has confirmed that the two winners were a scientist called Cinderella and that ever so famous game show host Midas Midason. Tributes have been pouring in in the last few minutes for my... What? Well, my just dead. What's going on? Why isn't someone telling me about this? No, 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 no. Oi, let's get out of here. Oi. We apologise for this temporary outbreak of real emotion on Galactivision. We shall replace the 20 hundred hours news with some very tedious Tijuana Brass Band classics. That poor newsreader. That was a bit nasty. Not to tell him that his brother was dead. You're right, love. Oi, you've dropped something. If you pardon the expression. She's gone. She all steamed up about. I wonder what she dropped. A message pod. Must have been serious. I better be a good lad and stick it in the lost property. Funny old bird she was. <laughs> So what does this frog thing actually want? Isn't it obvious? Not to me. It's sort of expansion. You mean they want to invade our galaxy? I would have thought so. Oh no, not more of it, Sarbaheclians. All those teeth. Although I only ever met Charlican. Oh! <gasps> oh! Are you okay? Oh, my abdomen's sore. How far gone are you? What? Well, I mean, how long have you been pregnant? I'm not, you cheeky sod. I'm not being funny, Maureen, but what's that swelling? Oh, bloody hell. 
And it must be where it stung me. Shall I kiss you better? My tongue has healing properties. Don't you Ow. dare. Oh, I can love like a hungry hound. You filthy little man. Can't you control your husband? Oh, not usually. Oh, if you change your mind, Maureen, just say the word. I'll be there like a whippet on a raw steak. Look out! Look out! The thing's coming back! Move! Out of here! Back to the main passenger area! There is Earth food there for you. I must get the ship moving. But where are we going? To our destinies. Out! I've just checked on Midas and Cindy. They're safely frozen into their cryo capsule. Well, let's hope that helps them for a while. Any luck with the ship search? I've done a sweep, as you asked, and we're in luck. There's another ship not far away at all. I've run a scan, and it seems to have only one life form on board. We need to check that the ship has a detox device and that the occupant will be happy for the four of us to come aboard. One look at my outfit would make anyone melt. The problem is, we can't communicate with them. The system's been smashed. Maybe we should risk transmitting over and ask. Both ships are stationary. Oh, what the hell? After what we've been through today, another risk won't harm us. Right, I've got the coordinates. Into the cubicle. Setting coordinates. Transmitting now. <laughs> What a peculiar ship. The walls are painted crimson. And there are gold pillars everywhere. I believe this is what you call camp. It looks like a low-class brothel. Well, at least it's not a military craft. Hello, anyone around? Turnidus, we must act with caution. Must we? Oh, OK. Look, maroon carpet on the floor. I like a tufted shag. Very odd. Should we try through here? Okay. Ah! Look! On the floor! Oh no! Where have you been? Sorry, sir. I was sorting out a replacement. Pilot Kalis is now on reception security duties. Right. Are we ready now? Yes. Wait! What is that? It's a weapon. I said no weaponry allowed on this planet. It violates their cultural beliefs. But, sir... Do as he says. Leave it here. If you'd be so kind to lead the way to the LRT reception area... This had better be worth it, Hammond, or I'll make your life hell. After you, Cymbeline. And don't call me that. As I said, Colonel Greed, so very destructive. <laughs> Scylla, in a pool of blood. We've transmitted aboard the editor ship, the Tinkerbell. Oh no, not that horrendous Harridan. Scylla, can you hear me? Is he dead? I'll check for a pulse. I wonder who did this to him. He's still alive. Just. Mr. Bub, look at this. A gunshot wound. Why would the editor shoot his own sidekick down? I doubt you'll make any sense of a man who wears yellow hot pants and a paisley polo neck. Oh, help me. He spoke. I damaged my throat when I fell. Leave him to die. Oh, I'm bleeding to death. Mr. Bub, we can't do that. Life is sacred. He is party to my being trapped in this drinks machine. Recriminations later. I'm going to take him to the ship's medic bay. Now, don't worry, Scylla. We're going to sort you out. I hope you know what you're doing, dear King. Wait for me! Eat your Earth-type food. Keep the young woman well. This isn't proper Earth food. Do not complain, or I'll hurt you. Charming. Why don't you let us go? Transmit us to Medic World or something. You are now part of my plan. <gasps> Frag! What? 
I forgot to video the littlest hobo. Shut, Shut up. up. I will lock you in here. All the doors will be security sealed. Look what it's left us to eat. So now what do we do? I know something we could start to do. What's that? Suck on this. Oh! way to eat a stick of rock is not my idea of spending time productively. You'd think that frog creature would have left us more to eat than 25 sticks of bright and rock. Maureen, may I be so bold as to suggest some games we could play with these long, thick, sticky sticks? <laughs> right, that's it. I'm sick of you rubbing my face in your perversions. I want a divorce. Why? What have I done now? All of you keep calm. We have to get out of here. I've wired him up into this machine. It repairs wounds. Luckily, it wasn't that deep. He's a bit careless, that editor chap. Look! A detoxing machine! We can cure Cindy and Midas. Here goes. Wait! What is it? Before you do that... Scylla, can you hear me? Oh, yes. We can save your life. Please, help me. But only if you agree to the following. Oh, anything. I'm dying. First, you restore Midas's mind. Okay. Then, you explain why that editor chap has done what he's done. Okay, okay. Just help me. Istabub, he's agreed. Now, please, I can't let him die. Inaugurating body repair device. Cheers. Excuse me. Wait! Come back! Scylla! You see? 
We can't trust a scoundrel like that. Quick, after her. I mean, in. <laughs> This isn't a very exciting job, not one phone call yet. I know, I'll be a bit cheeky and use a work phone to call up Violet. Good afternoon, Sir Chelt. Oh, hello there. Is that Violet good grip? It is indeed, lovey. It's Crispin Kalis here. Oh, hello, love. I was just wondering if you'd had any luck on that DNA lead. We're still awaiting the results from the lab, my love. But don't you worry. As soon as I have any news, I'll call you on your personal mailer. Cheers. Sorry to have called again. Oh, it's not a problem. We know what it's like here at Search Out. We've been in the business for 50 years, and no matter who you are, it's always a nerve-wracking time. When you're trying to find your real parents... Where is he? He can't have got far. This ship isn't big enough to hide on. Right, freeze. Scylla, we've just saved your life. And now you point a gun at us. Have you no morals? Cut the whinging. Easter bub, smash through that locked door. Now. No. But why do you have a plastic bag full of strange raw meat? Quiet. Easter bub, do it. Or Turnitus dies. <laughs> Step into the cubicle, Colonel. And you too, Mr. Granite. I really don't think this is a good idea. Be quiet, or you're out of a job. Now, to put in the coordinates. And a programme to wipe them from the memory bank after transmat. Uh, what if it's, is this... For is the a... last time, stay quiet. I know what I'm doing. Long range transmat initiated. If you'd care to move over and let me in... Thank you. This had better be the truth, Hammond. The truth is out there. I won't help if you point a gun at us. Harry. Put the gun down and I will do it. Oh, OK. Onto the floor. Oh. What's in there, Scylla? Smash through and you'll see. It's security locked. Very well. But if this is a trick, I shall smash you down too. Look at all that equipment. Why was it locked away? Scylla? At last. I knew it must be on board here. What is it? The machine that will return me to a woman. Where are we? Welcome to my beautiful castle on Zulian Major. The newest attraction here since the giant spider infestation in the marshes of Nurgaflugel. Hold on, we're not allowed to be here. It doesn't matter. But if we need backup or anything happens, there's nothing the Space Patrol can do. Do as your colonel commander, be quiet. This place is off limits. Exactly why I have set up my base here. The root for my empire. This is a notorious holiday planet. What are you planning to do? Invade the galaxy in flip-flops? You may laugh, Colonel, but soon the Joker will be you, my trump card. Let's get out of here. Quiet. Where is the relic, Hammond? Where's the Fandilocks ring? Gone. I knew it. I don't know how you discovered those things about me or the Fandilocks affair, but I do know there is no ring here. You're perfectly correct, Colonel. I sold it to get funds for the construction work now undergoing Zulian Major. I believe it's up for auction very soon on Fetid Six, if you'd like to be. It was a ruse to get me here. For the last time, who are you? My real name is Adam Arkenstein. You! It's that simple to change sex? Yes. Aaron, or the editor as you know him, has used the skills of Dr. Proctor, one of the greatest genetic scientists, to create this machine. Those giblets you're holding, they're not your... 
Are they? Yes, the parts of my anatomy that make me a woman. I just hope they survive being out of the protective fluid. Aaron tried to destroy them, and me. Hold on. Where is Aaron? Well, he's not aboard the ship. I don't know. Look, I must hurry. You promised to restore Midas's mind. Listen, help me change back and I'll do anything for you. I'll even help you track down Aaron. But I must change now, before these bits curl up and I'm stuck as a bloke. That's why I'm so desperate. Oh, very well. But this is the last favour. Thank you, Mr. Bub. Now, turn it us. Follow my instructions very closely. Okay. I've removed my Rayburns in readiness. Right. Mm. Okay. Do only as I say. Once I'm inside the cubicle, you've got to press the green button down here. What's going on? You set up Galileo and ran off with the relic. I thought I recognised your face under that disguise. Yes, and I've been building this charming Saxon fortress here on Zulian Major with part of the money. With the rest, I bought out the current owners. I read this castle was to be a major new attraction. Oh, it will be. Don't you worry. Colonel, I must insist we get out of here. That's how you knew those things about me. From Gamma. This is Security Guard Cranid requesting immediate... I don't think so, Sonny. Prepare to meet my head of security. My teeth! A delightful creature, broad, muscular, crew-cut, with an outstanding knowledge of mechanics, genetics, robotics and knitting. Get us out of here, Cranid, quick! Uh, Okay. This place is sealed, and there is nowhere to run! Dr. Proctor, are you there? (laughs) You back at last? Yes, my dear. Would you be so kind as to join us in the entrance hall? We have guests. I'll just wash the engine grease off my hands. I shouldn't bother. One of our guests is female. Maybe I won't then. (laughs) Nurse Patterson, polish up the stirrups. We've got guests. Emergency, emergency. This... You bastard! And if I didn't need you in one piece, I'd add your body on top! What are you going to do with me? <laughs> ah! Dr. Proctor! Oh, you bought me some totty! She's half woman, half octopus! Just imagine what eight arms and a very long tongue can do for you. Yes, well, there'll be none of that, Dr. Proctor. Take her below. I'd take her anywhere. I meant take her to the laboratory. This is Colonel Franklin. Bloody hell! You managed to get hold of her? A stroke of pure luck on Volterabia. This puts us steps ahead. What are you going to do to me? What I'd like to do and what I'm going to do are two entirely different things, love. Now don't struggle, and I promise to wear my latex gloves. (laughs) Oh, it couldn't be better. (laughs) If you two pay over a drink, I'd already have froth on my lips. (laughs) It's all very quiet. Well, I did what he instructed. I hope you did it right. We need Scylla's help. Midas is deranged, we have no real means of transport or locating the editor, and all of us could have severe radiation poisoning. Look, the cubicle door's opening. Will a more beautiful, charming, helpful Scylla emerge? Bloody hell. It's like sitting in a sodden microwave. Unfortunately not. Well, don't just stand there like a Venetian blind with no slats. Help me out, you dozy git. Oh, right, of course. Has the operation been a success? Well, my bits are where they should be, but how long it'll stay like that is anybody's guess. No side effects? I've got bad guts, but that could be the dodgy curry ad last night. Now listen, you. Uh, you promised to help us. Oh, stop moaning. I said I would and I will. Well, uh, you can start by restoring Midas's mind. Oh, all right. No bloody rest for the wicked. Well, where is he? Aboard uh, the nick of time. Oh, so that's how you escaped that explosion. And you haven't said sorry for trying to kill us either. I didn't. It was that mad sod, Aaron. Look, are you going to stand there like a plum tree with no fruit? Sorry? Go and get Midas, then we can all get after Aaron. Oh, right. I'll transmit back to the nick of time and bring him over. Right, I'll go and find that ZX-81 his mind is stored in. Uh, What about me? Is there anything I can do? Brew me a coffee and make it like my men. Uh, Black, sweet and strong? No, cheap, cool, and comes instantly. 
I'll be back in a mo. Charming. Now, while the Colonel undergoes the change, I must secure this planet as my Dominion's launch pad. Uh, yes? It's Aaron. The time has arrived. Release of the couriers. Uh, already? Indeed. Colonel Franklin is in my power, and the pallbearers are on standby. Okay, I'll start them in the city and the leisure resort. And then move them to the settlements after the race. Leave the Zulians. I will need live bodies. You know what to do with the rest? Out! Is this going to work? Well, if it doesn't, you fancy being a carer? Are all the connections the right way round? I don't know. Paul Midas. Pray to your guesswork. Oh, belt up, you big drama queen, and stand back. Here goes. How long will it take? Not long. Just time for a quick fag. I've been dying for a Rothmans. Bloody Aaron wouldn't have me smoking on the ship. Is this the famous earth weed? A foul habit. Now privy to the depraved few. Stop moaning. Want a drag? And don't flick ash into my drip tray. Not long to go now. Was Cindy okay in the cryocapsule back on the nick of time? Yes, she looks so ill. I hope it does curtail her deterioration. Right. Has it worked? Oi, Midas, can you hear me? Who are you? And you? And you? Where's Cindy? And where's that editor chap? I have a few bones to pick with him. Will you explain, or shall I? You can do what you like. I'm finishing me fag. I feel like I've been a contestant in that ever-so-famous game show. Six pints of vodka and a line of coke. Stay calm, Midas. I am Istabub. This is Turnidus. And this is Scylla. Now a woman again. Or as near as can be. I think you'd better explain what's been going on. Before I awaken Craniard, I think it's time to begin the eradication of yet another strand of my tortured past. Ah, yes. The main thread of my internal angst. The reason for my current guise. I think a composed calling card will start the next game of deception quite beautifully. A game which for all my life has been one-sided and will now end in death! <laughs> this euphonious reminder will break the inflated bubble that has suppressed and tormented forever. Clear the chords! <coughs> It's over to you, the very reverend Nermal Hammond. in mysterious ways. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It's such an easy phrase. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You let the vicar down. And now he's coming back to town. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Have you forgotten me? Praise the Lord. We were wed in 2093. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You said till death us part. Which it did. You stabbed my heart. Did money fill your purse? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. While I was in a hearse. Praise the Lord. Start to quake, your felon has been found. Cause secrets don't rest underground. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thought you'd covered your tracks. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. But guess who's coming back? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. The dead will rise again. This time I will bring you pain.
And so Scylla agreed to help us and restore your mind. You see, I turn my back for a minute and I'm subject to abuse. Count yourself lucky at your age. <sighs> so, to recap the situation, Cindy and I are kidnapped because we somehow pose a threat to this editor bloke who is really called Aaron. It's a bub here has been turned into a drinks machine. Turnidus, king of the Volterabian people, has become swept along in the excitement. Scylla here was forced to work for Aaron, otherwise she wouldn't be changed back to a woman. Aaron has now disappeared. Cindy, now in cryosleep, and I have radiation poisoning, and the engines on the nick of time are knackered. What's the good news? It wasn't a dodgy curry. I just had wind. A succinct summary, Midas. Well, hadn't Cindy and I better get detoxed? There's a machine over there which does it for you. Excellent. I was starting to feel a bit queasy. So what do we do now? I'm going to have another fag. I want to know why this Aaron chap did this to me. And who I am. You must know, Scylla. I know where the real you is. You know the truth. Some of it. Let me get detoxed, then you can show us. Uh, is it over here? Is it, uh, yes, uh, and all you do is you plug it in there and it totally Soon, I will know the truth, Turnidus. Soon. You must be prepared for whatever Scylla reveals. I feel a little scared now. Poor Oysterbub. At least we can then think about setting you free. Thank you, Scylla. I feel much better now. Well, what about Cindy? We can fetch her out the cryo capsule in a minute. Are you finished over there? Is to Bob's getting impatient, understandably. Coming! So where are we going to? Follow me. Awaken, Cranid. Um, what's, what's going on? I've strapped you to this machine. Soon it'll be time to say goodbye to your sanity as you are... Altered. I thought you'd killed me. Oh, human tissue's too flexible to expend. Only in rare circumstances does its termination become warranted. As Cindy, Midas and Istabub found out. Midas? What have you got to do with Midas Midason's death? Everything! With him gone, a true love can blossom. Is she done? Yep. I'll send her up. What have you done to Colonel Franklin? Not what I'm going to do to you. Which is? I'm going to drain your mind of all its contents and turn you into an emotionless robotic mercenary and make you carry out terribly evil deeds throughout the whole universe. How oh, that old chestnut? You rude little man. Ow! Ah! Come in, Colonel. Thank you. Are you okay? Perfectly fine, thank you. Now, Colonel, I need you to do me a little favour. Anything you ask, Nermal. You've hypnotised her. Ah, nothing so crude and fallible. What can I do for you? I'd like you to organise the transmatting of my ship, the Tinkerbell, from its orbit around Volterabia to an orbit around this planet. It will be a pleasure to do. Oh, this gets easier by the minute. Colonel, don't. He's mad. Who? Nermal? Don't be ridiculous. This is Colonel Franklin contacting LRT reception on Earth. It's through here. It's very dark. Come on. It's a bit cramped. What is that? It's like a huge fish tank with green liquid and bubbles everywhere. There's something in it. You did ask. This is like a setting from that ever so scary game show. Don't forget your waterproof underpants. Mr. Bub. Look! It's a human body, floating, attached to wires and tubes. Is that... is that really Mr. Bub? Right, so. I knew it. I knew I was really human. This is obscene. Why has Aaron done this to him? I don't know. Listen, when I caught up with him after many years, he'd already transferred the brain into the drinks machine. How do you know Aaron? I'm ashamed to say he's my brother. <gasps> And he turned you into a man? And then tried to kill you? Only because I didn't want him to kill you lot. Anyhow, you won't get away for long. Look at me in there. Who am I, Scylla? I keep saying I haven't a clue. All I know is that Aaron used you as an experiment in taking a living human brain and transplanting it into a machine. That's sick. How do we restore Estabub? Hold on, I'll just get my brain surgery kit out of my back pocket. Really? Oh, don't be dumb. You have no idea as to my real identity. That body in the tank. No, love. Although looking at that body and the size of his chopper, I'd say you wouldn't have much problem in getting a shag. Scylla! 
Well, I've been Aaron's prisoner for nearly a month now. I'm just about ready for a bit of how's your father. Leave my buttocks alone, you vamp. What was that? Oh, no. The ship's moved. Aaron must have come back. Right. I'm going to smash his face in. Scylla, wait! He could still be armed! What shall we do? We need Scylla on our side. She's the only one who seems to know what's going on. Come on! I'm right behind you. Mr. Bub? I want my body back. I promise to do whatever I can to restore you, but we must stick together. It's a nice change to hear you talking sense, Midas. Mr. Bub? Oh, very well. I'll lead the way. And I must remember to phone my wife. I'm due for a change of robes. What are we saying? Come on! It is done, Nermal. Excellent. What do you want? I was just starting work on a Mark III shuttle pod. Leave that. I've got all my money somehow. I can't survive on the pit and you pay me. I have promised you riches beyond your wildest dreams. A harem of nubile nymphs at your beck and call. If that is what you so desire. <laughs> As long as it's none of those long-haired ones. I can't stand dopey chicks in skirts. In time, Dr. Proctor, in time. Now, transport up to the Tinkerbell and bring the equipment stored in there down here. Uh, leave the back room. There are important private things there. I thought you ditched the dresses. Do it! Oh, stop your whinging. I'm on my way. You wear women's clothes. Don't start getting all friendly on me now. For soon you will be nothing but a tool in my command. Chance would be a fine thing. What shall I do now, Nermal? I think it's time you and I paid a return visit to our dear friend Galgalin. Before you return to your duties on Earth. Come out! Stop hiding, you deceptive git! Where is he? I'll run him down. Good. Cause then I'll sit on him and punch his face in. Oh, that oh, bad old really I'm gonna do his head in one of these days. His face. What's going on here? Ladies and drinks machine, please! He's not here! So what made the ship move? The engines haven't been activated. Maybe Aaron is controlling this ship by remote. It isn't remote accessible. Hold on, let's try the scanners. That isn't Volterabia. Another planet in this system? There isn't one. It's Sulian Major. How the hell did we get here? It's light years away from Volterabia. I've got it. Well, don't give it to me. Uh, the jolt. We were transmatted here. The whole ship. Oh, this makes no sense. Why? It's where Aaron is making his base. Look! The transmat is activating. Oh, quick, hide. It could be Aaron. We'll jump him when he appears. Oh, don't be stupid. He could still be armed. Quick! Everyone into this broom cupboard! Come on, down the oh, way! Let me get him first, come on! Oh, 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 selfish swine. Luckily, we can see through the grill in the cupboard door. I'd forgotten how camp this ship was. That's not the editor. I mean, Aaron. What is that? It's Dr. Proctor. Half octopus, half lesbian and the most dangerous genetic scientist and part-time mechanic ever. Oh, right, smartened up. I'm back at reception now to try and stop Aaron. Hold on, where's Madame Deephole gone? Sir! Wow. Pilot Crispin Kalis, how are you, my dear, dear fellow? I'm on reception today, sir. Do you think I look good behind a desk? Well, the change will do you good. I miss piloting you to and from the Crab Free Research Base on Mars, sir. Oh, yes, oh, I remember. We had many an interesting chat, my boy. You were like the dad I never had. <laughs> oh, how is the search for your real parents? Oh, taking its time, sir. Whoever they are, they did a good job in hiding it. Well, I'm sure Search Out will find them. They have a good success rate. I hope so. I'll keep you posted. So what are you doing here at HQ? That's a long story, Pilot Kalis. Listen, Cranid was supposed to escort this guest, this bloke, with a perm out. Do you know where he went to? I'll just check. Odd. 
Both of them and Colonel Franklin have transmitted out. To an unrecorded destination. What? Very improper. Too right it is. Blimmin' Aaron at work again. I wonder if she and him are... No. Listen, did you see where the woman who was sitting over there, Madame Deephole, did you see where she went to? Yeah, she got this message pod delivered to her and suddenly she ran off. Really? Yeah, she looked very upset. Mm -hmm. In fact, she was so distressed she dropped the pod, so I held on to it. Ah. Just in case she came back for it. Good thinking, eh? You are, you are a good thinking boy. Let me see it. I shouldn't really be passing on personal mail pods. I will take full responsibility for my actions, Pilot Crispin Kalis. Very well, sir. Thank you. Ow, it's hot. Ow. Right, let's hear what made her rush off. Special message. Delivery urgent. Play. Congratulations, Madam Depot. You are the lucky star of Stellar Network Radio's next reunion program. Unbeknown to you, we've been contacted by a long-lost relative who wants to be reunited with you. So, pack your bags. A chauffeur-driven limousine is waiting outside your brothel, and in one hour you'll be on a flight to Zulian Major, where we will reunite you with none other than your... Bloody thing! What's wrong with it? Play. Play! Ouch! It's getting so hot! I can hardly hold it! Hell's teeth! Kalis! Quick! Stand back, sir! Stand back! Oh. Blimey! What made it do that? Someone didn't want anybody else to hear that message. How much longer is it going to be? We could be trapped in this broom cupboard for hours, and my receptacle is aching. Would you mind where you're putting your trunk, Turnitus? <sighs> Sorry about that. This is Dr. Proctor calling Aaron from the Tinker Bell. I've checked all the controls, everything's in order. I've done a scan sweep, and it looks like you've transmatted that old crate, the nick of time, here as well. I must have got caught in the LRT beam. Forget it. It's useless. Find Scylla's body and incinerate it. Then get the equipment down here post-haste. What about Isterbub's body? Bring that too. We have much experimenting left. No. Shh. You there? I thought I heard something. Right, I'll see to it now. Out. <laughs> Quick, let me out, I can't breathe! Oh, 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 oh. Honestly, Scylla. Sorry, but me and Broccoli could never agree. They're going to destroy my body. What shall we do? We have got to stop Aaron. Let's hold that Dr. Proctor creature hostage. Listen, love, there's no way I'm tackling a dyke with eight arms. I know a man who'd pay good money to. She'll mangle us to pulp. Surely we could each hold two arms? I am not indulging in a wrestling match with a seven-foot squid. She's right. I didn't fancy those suckers. So now what? Well, why don't we go back to the nick of time and rethink our strategy? And quickly, before that seafood surprise comes back. Everyone into the transmat. Let's hope she doesn't hear us. By my trouble, oh, please. Up. Please please up. Please up. Please. Please up. Reversing settings. Transmatting now. <laughs> This is getting worse. Like my blisters. And we still haven't detoxed Cindy. Now I'm light years from home. We can't stay on this ship. The engines are leaking radiation. Why don't we pilot it down to Zulian Major? Are you mad? We'll die if we stay on board here. And we can't transmit back to the Tinkerbell. She's right. Well, don't sound so surprised. At least we have more options on Zulian Major. And we can radio for help from there. Yes. This is all getting too big to handle. Just like that vicar once had in a jacuzzi. But who can fly this ship? Me. Then get on with it. I want to get off this death trap. Right. I'll get us going. Zulian Major, here we come. You OK, sir? You look worried. I am. Very. Oh, look, over there. A man wearing stretch lycra pants has just walked into reception. That reminds me. I must get my dog some fresh offal. <laughs> look, you better go and see to him, Pilot Kalis. Right, sir. Mm. Well, how can I help you? I'd like to lay a complaint. I'd like to lay a tasty blonde with tits you could ski down, but you don't always get what you want in life, do you? Don't be so offensive. Hang on a minute. 
You're that geezer off the telly. <laughs> yes, I am. And I have a serious complaint. God blimey! My old mum won't believe me when I tell her who I've met today. Look, this is serious. Oh, OK. What type of complaint? It's about my brother, Midas Midason. I think he's been murdered. How much longer till we reach Zulian Major, Turnitus? Should be two minutes. What's that? A fault. What? But we're about to inaugurate landing procedures. The retro systems won't respond. We're gonna crash. Ooh, what's going on? We're gonna crash. Look, smoke. Put your fag out, Scylla. This is no time for a spliff. The ship's on fire. Oh no, it must be the engine rooms again. Again? And they caught fire earlier. You might have bloody well said. One minute. I'm trying to find out where we're going to crash. What are we gonna do? Die quickly. We've got to stop the ship. I can't. The fire's destroyed all the links to the engines. Look how close the ground is. Five seconds. Oh, no.